this appears to be recording now. So I'm going to get started. So we're going to talk about some things, and I might actually prove some things. Um, yeah, I know, exciting, right? Uh, so I said that a category was locally small if the home sets are actually sets, uh, and that I wouldn't use that terminology in general. We'll just assume that all of our, all the categories we talk about are locally small, unless I say otherwise. Um, but a category is small if it has a set of objects. That's actually equivalent to saying that it has a set of morphisms, period. Um, and you can think about that if you would like. Uh, I would say that the set of morphisms perspective is the category theory perspe perspective. And the set of objects perspective is the general mathematician perspective. Um, all right, so let's talk about something that, that should be familiar. Um, a morphism. F between two objects is, is an isomorphism if there exists some G, some morphism from Y to X, such that, let's see, F composed with G is the identity on Y. And G composed with F is the identity on X. <coughs> um, we say that X and Y are isomorphic if such a thing exists. And we write that for isomorphism. All right. So now, annoyingly, I sort of, because I couldn't write as small as I wanted to, uh, and I decided that I only wanted to film one board, even though this whole room has walls, because it was too difficult to switch over the cameras. Um, my plan was to have the list of categories up and then to say what the isomorphisms were in each. That's not going to be doable, but OK. <coughs> so examples of isomorphisms. So in P underline, where P is a post set, uh, isos are the identity morphisms. Those are the only isomorphisms. Um, for M, where M is a monoid now, so this category is now a one object category with morphisms, the elements of the monoid, composition determined by multiplication. The isomorphisms are the invertible elements. Invertible else. Right? Because the an invertible element in a, in a monoid precisely means that, well, there's an element and you can multiply it by another element on either side and it gets you back the identity. All right, so let's see. In set group uh, ab Vect f, which is going to be, let's say, finite dimensional vector spaces over some field f. That's a horrendous f. Uh, <coughs> and mon, the isos, so the isomorphisms are bijections. Um, so I mean, the isomorphisms of functions are. Um, uh, bijections. For group, and for all these other ones, the key thing is that if you have an inverse function, uh, an inverse bijection, if you have a bijection, then the inverse of that bijection 
still has the same structure. So the, if you have a bijective group homomorphism, when you take the inverse function, that function is still a group homomorphism. And so it's still a morphism in the category. All right. So, ooh, I wrote some things here about this. Uh, OK, so I'll, I'll actually do this, this thing for groups. So if we have g to h, this is a, um, a, bijec a bijective group homomorphism. Um, we can take its inverse function. So it takes us from h to g. Um, <coughs> And for two elements in H, we have, let's see, um, let's call the inverse element of H1 G1 and the inverse element of H2 G2. Um, <coughs> All right, then G1, G2 equals, OK, well, phi is a group homomorphism. So we can pull these out. And then this tells us that this is H1, H2. So inverse of h1, inverse of h2 is g1, g2. So this is the inverse of h1, h2 by what we did here. So the point is that this inverse is a group homomorphism, um, which is why when you're Checking that you have an isomorphism of groups, you only ever check that you have a bi you only need to check that you have a bijection. You never bother checking that the inverse is a group homomorphism because it is automatically. This is different from the case of topological spaces. <coughs> so what's an isomorphism of topological spaces? ISOs are homeomorphisms. And what's that? Let's say that is a bijective continuous map with continuous inverse. All right, and so <coughs> let's see an example. So we'll consider the the continuous function from the real line with the Euclidean topology to the real line with the indiscrete topology. So this is just the standard um, topology on the real line. This is the topology where the only open sets are the empty set and R itself. So if we take. And we just have, this is, this is the identity on the sets. All right, so what's the point? The point is that this is clearly bijective uh, on the real numbers. Um, and the pre-image of the open sets here, well, the open sets are the empty set, and the pre-image of the empty set is empty, which is open here. And the whole, the whole real line, and the pre-image of that is the whole real line, which is open here. So this is a continuous map. But then we consider the map back <coughs> from Rd to R epsilon, which, well, OK. For this to satisfy this identity condition, and because this sends x to x, it really needs to send x back to x. Otherwise, it, won't, it just won't be an identity on this. So x to x. Great. 
However, this is not continuous. Why isn't this continuous? Well, the pre-image of, say, 0 to 1 is 0 to 1, but this isn't open in the discrete topology. So this is not a continuous map. <clears throat> and I wanted to sort of distinguish between these two cases, where all you had to have here was bijection. But here, having a bijection doesn't carry the structure of being continuous with it on the inverse. All right. So, uh, and then the last example I wanted to write down was that the category of chain complexes, um, so a map from A bullet to B bullet is an ISO if Fn from An to Bn is for all n. Um, right, so this is if it's an isomorphism in the category of R module, if each of these is an isomorphism in the category of R modules. <coughs> All right. So isomorphism is somehow the correct notion of equality um, uh, in a category. And actually, sometimes it's still too strong a notion of equality. Um, and the sort of higher category theory, which we will talk about at some point, um, is all about having weaker notions of equality. All right. So uh, now we have, now I'm actually going to prove something. Um, although arguably, I've done some proving of things, but very little. Uh, all right. So let's have a proposition. All right. Let <coughs> F be a map in some category. Then the following are equivalent. <coughs> and this is sort of um, this result, sort of like the. As I said, part of the point of category theory is that what's important is the net is the like web of relationships that an object has to every other object. And this result sort of is showing you that if you're looking at it from that perspective, then isomorphic objects are the same. All right, so one, f is an isomorphism. Two, the function and this is a function of sets, f lower star, which goes from hom a x to hom a y, and sends a map here, g, to the map f g is an ISO for all <coughs> objects A and C. And three, the function F upper star from HOM YZ to HOM XZ, uh, which <coughs> ugh, um, which sends a map here from G to GF is an ISO for all objects Z in C. All right, so this is the statement. Um, Assuming that this is proven, you can see that sort of this is saying that if this is an isomorphism, then maps into x and y are the same set 
and maps out of x and y are the same set. Um, and with more machinery, you can actually say some stronger things than this, but this is sort of a first pass at that perspective. Um, so what's happening here, this is a map. Um, I'm starting with a map G from A to X, and then I'm composing with F to get a map from A to Y. And here, I'm starting with a map from Y to Z, and then I'm pre-composing with my map F, like that. Yes? The category of sets. Yes. So these are, these are bijections on sets, because, because we are not hardcore category theorists, and so our home sets are actually sets. All right, let's prove this. Sorry. We'll first show that one implies two. So suppose F is an isomorphism. All right. And we want to show that this is an isomorphism. So we'll show it by showing that it's injective. Injective. All right. So if we have that F star H equals F star G. <coughs> um, so H, H and G, um, and H and G uh, maps from A to X. <coughs> uh, then, and now I'm actually just going to write out a bunch of equalities. All right, so H is equal to the identity on x composed with h, which is, OK, so f is an isomorphism, which means that we can go from x to y to x via f, f inverse h. All right, and now this is f inverse f lower star of h. But because of this equality, we have this as f inverse f lower star of g, which is f inverse f g, which is the identity on x of g, which is g. So that's injectivity. Um, so. Like, yeah. Um, <coughs> all right, and then surjectivity. All right. So if we have some map J from A to Y, we want to show that it's, it's F lower star of something in here. Um, well, well, F inverse of J is a map from A to X because F inverse goes from Y to X. So we can just compose. And then F lower star of F inverse J is f, f inverse j, which is the identity on y, j, which is j. So we found something in here that maps on the f star to the thing that we started with. And so it's subjective. All right. So that's, that's one direction here. <coughs> um, don't need these anymore. So I said this thing about small, and maybe that will uh, that that will come up again later. 
Um, but I should say that like, I'm going to be talking about a lot of things and examples in this series that I sort of never come back to. They're just interesting pieces of mathematics to, so that you can sort of grapple with the, um, the sort of ideas and so that you've seen at some point. Like, they're useful things to have seen. Um, all right, but continuing on with this, I want to show that 2 implies 1. All right, so we're going to start by supposing that f lower star is an isomorphism. Um, for all, oh, that's loud, um, A, objects A and C. All right. So in particular, we can consider F lower star from um, home my x to hum yeah okay to hum y y <coughs> so here i've chosen y for a um, and as we've said this is an isomorphism. So by surjectivity, uh, there is some g from y to x in here such that uh, f lower star of g, which is f of g uh, is the identity on y. Great. Uh, then, well, we've got this g. We should do something with it. We know that f of g is the identity. Well, g of f is going to be some map from x to itself, right? Because f is a map from x to y, and g is a map from y to x. Yeah, that's right. All right. Um, so now we consider f lower star from hom xx to hom when it is x, y. And again, by our assumption, this is an isomorphism. All right, then we have that <coughs> f lower star of g of f. So g of f is from x to x, so it is in here. This is going to be f, g, f. So it's do f, do g, do f. <coughs> so we go from x to y to x to y. And that is means it's something in here. All right. But we've already seen up here that fg is the identity on y. So this is f. OK. However, f lower star of the identity on x is f identity on x, which is f. And this is injective. So by injectivity of f lower star, we have that gf equals the identity on x. And now we've shown the other direction, that f and g are mutual inverses. And so f is an isomorphism. <coughs> I'm going to leave 
showing the third part as an exercise, it's the same thing, except you're changing the order of things. And so it's, um, it's formally the same, but a meaningfully, a meaningfully useful exercise to do. All right. Any questions about that? No? All right. Cool. Let's keep going. <coughs> <coughs> I'm trying really hard not to cough into this microphone. Oh. All right. Now we're just having a bunch of Definitions. Um, what time is it? Oh, wow. This is going much slower than I thought it would. Um, so, a map from an object to itself is an endomorphism. Uh, we write and x for um, say the hom set from x to itself. <coughs> um, it's worth noting that because this thing has an identity morphism, and you can compose any two things in it, uh, the endomorphisms forms a monoid under composition. Um, because composition of morphisms is associative, and you have an identity element. All right. Uh, F from x to x is an automorphism. Um, if F is an isomorphism. Um, <coughs> There's like a bunch of stuff that I sort of haven't said, uh, but like hopefully it should be clear, and if it's not clear, you should do this as an exercise, that composing two isomorphisms gives you an isomorphism. Um, so in particular, if I write ORT x for the automorphisms of x, this thing forms a group under um, composition. All right. Uh, and a groupoid is a category in which every Morphism is an identity and that leads us to an example which I might also call a definition, the best definition. Um, or I might call it a joke. And that is a group is a one object groupoid. Yes. Ah, uh, yes. Thank you. That would be very odd. Um, thank you. So, morphism. Sorry, I've been talking for a while. I'm getting, getting my head. Show some water. All right, this is the best definition of group. Although I admit I lifted that joke from. Uh, from Algebra Chapter Zero by Alufi, uh, which is an excellent book if you are thinking about going over algebra again. All right, 
So a subcategory let's say mathcal D of mathcal C consists of subcollections of objects and morphisms um, so oh, I should write it the way I've got it here so that is the objects of D are contained in the objects of C and the morphisms of D are contained in the morphisms of C. And the morphisms here have the same source and target in D as they do in C. Composition in D is the same as composition in C, um, <coughs> uh, which still forms a category under the same um, identities and composition. All right. So I mean, it's what you think it is, right? Um, and so as examples, abelian groups forms a subcategory of groups which forms a subcategory of monoids, which forms a subcategory of sets. <coughs> uh, this is a little bit of a lie. Um, uh, it's true here, and arguably true here. Uh, depending on how you look at it, it's true all the way up. It's, All right, so here is an exercise I will actually write up. You should check that given any category C, The collection of all objects and ISOs forms a subcategory. Um, this is called the maximal groupoid. So what I'm saying is take as objects in your new category, take as a collection of objects all objects, and take as a collection of morphisms just the isomorphisms from the category that you started with. Um, that includes the identities. And then you should check that under the same composition, that still forms a category. <coughs> um, even better, you should check that uh, any other groupoid that's a subcategory of that is contained in this maximum thing. But that's up to you. All right. So another definition, the opposite category of some category C is called C op. Uh, <coughs> it has um, the objects of C op are the objects of C. So it has the same objects. But now, a morphism. Uh, from 
say x to y in C op. We'll, we'll call it f op is from x to y is a morphism f from y to x in C. So say in top op, a morphism from x to y in the opposite category of topological spaces is a continuous map from y to x. Um, yeah, so that's something that takes a little bit of mental gymnastics to get used to. It's not so bad if you're thinking about these things abstractly. Uh, so composition, well, we want to compose G op with F op. And that's going to be F G op, right? Because um, say a map from x to y to z, say, so we started with F op and G op. That's really a map from. Um, Z to Y to X, G and F in, um, so this is in C op, and this is in C. And so really, we want this composition to be the op of this composition. And so we get, um, this is. G up. <coughs> and these two are equal. OK. Um, you should convince yourself this is a category. Oh, and the identities are still the identities. Um, although, really, what I want to say is that uh, the identity on x op is the identity on op, the identity on x, something like that. Um, so you might, I might actually put ops on on the objects as well. I wouldn't worry about it too much. Um, this will come up later quite a lot. Um, we'll talk about functors, I think, on Friday. Um, a lot of important functors are out of the opposite categories, um, or the ops of various categories, and gives you some properties that are useful. <coughs> all right, oh, this is, take your category turn around all the morphisms. That's what it is. Um, you take thing, and then you turn around all the arrows. All the arrows are now pointing in the opposite direction. That's, <coughs> that's what it is. Um, all right, some more definitions. And then we might prove something, which is nice, because um, you may have heard from Brian at some point that at the end of each mathematician's life, they go up to, um, I can't remember, whichever the, the, Egyptian, the Egyptian god is. And you know, they weigh your soul against your wrongdoings. And uh, with mathematicians, what they do is they take all the definitions you've written down and weigh that against all of the theorems that you've proven. Uh, and you get to go somewhere good if you've proven more theorems than, than definitions. So I'm a little bit concerned right now. But uh, we shall soldier on. So a map F is a monomorphism um, if for all uh, 
maps from w to x. Uh, f composed with g equals f composed with h implies that g and f are actually the same morphism. So I'm saying that it's a monomorphism if this implication is true. Uh, similarly, such a map is a epimorphism. If for all, what do I use here? Still g and h. g and h from y to z, we have the implication that g composed with a, uh, g composed with f equals h composed with f implies that g and h are the same morphism. So I've swapped these around. Um, all right. Uh, if we have that f composed with y composed with g, sorry, if we have that f composed with g is the identity on x, then um, f is a section. or right inverse okay so this is kind of annoying because we um, uh, this is kind of annoying because we write arrows down in the opposite direction in the opposite language from which we compose them so if I wrote this out as an equation then it would be clear that f is a right inverse um, some people like Scott, uh, think that for this reason, composition should be written in the other direction. And he's wrong. But it's, it's, it's an understandable, incorrect choice. Um, so, so it's a right inverse in that uh, this composition is g of f. All right. Um, you could, but even if I wrote them pointing that way, I would still have f g. Right? Like I, I would still follow it that way. Like I would read it that way because of the you read. <coughs> oh, I see. Yes, that's a good point. Um, that's a good point. Uh, but conventionally, arrows should go down and to the right. Um, these are just conventional. They're not indicative of anything meaningful. Um, uh, so this is a section of G, and G is a retract or left inverse of F. And clearly, if these are inverse isomorphisms, then these, are, these things are true. Um, but these are weaker statements, because I'm only asking for one of the compositions to be the identity, not necessarily the other way. <coughs> All right. And we say that x is a retract of y. So um, in the category of sets, monomorphisms are injective functions, and epimorphisms are surjective functions. Uh, it is not the case that in all categories where the underlying objects are sets of some sort, that that's true. Um, and it's a great pain that it's not true. Um, all right. Let's. But somehow, like, 
the point of defining these is that these are the correct notions for generalizing from what we've done in the past, what we know in the past. All right. So, uh, a proposition. <coughs> Sections are monomorphisms Retractions are epimorphisms um, and the point is that they actually carry more information than just saying that something is epi or mono and yes and we'll, sh we'll shorten monomorphism to mono and epimorphism to epi so uh, we would call a section, we also would call a section um, a split monomorphism. So I'll just write split mono, mono. Uh, and we would call a retraction a, a split epimorphism. All right. But that's just. Um, what we call things, this is the actual proposition. Let's prove it. Well, let's prove the first part, and the second part is an exercise. Um, all right. So, well, this is one, and this is two. <coughs> all right. So, suppose that f from x to y, x to y, x to y, is a section um, with left inverse G. So what am I saying? I'm saying that I have that this diagram <coughs> commutes. Um, which I also will, just because this is the start of this, and people might not be used to commuted diagrams, what I'm saying here is that GF is the identity on x. So this saying this diagram commutes is the same thing as writing this equation now. <coughs> All right. So what I want to talk about, I want to talk about if we have j and k from w to x. So this is two separate morphisms. And we want to say such that um, f of j equals f of k. Check that, yep, that's the direction we had over there. Um, then what do I want to show? OK, well, I want to show that j and k are actually the same morphism. Um, so I'll start with J. Well, that's the same as J is from W to X. So I can do the identity on X and then J. Well, the identity on X is also G of F. So I can do G of F of J. Well, F of J is F of K. So this is G of F of K. Oh, but G of F is still the identity on X. So this is the identity on x of k. Oh, well, that's just k. And so these are the same. Um, so what have I done? Diagrammatically, matically, how do I spell this? I don't know if that's right, but it'll do. Um, so we have two maps from w to x. And now I'm not asking that this, I'm a priori not asking that this diagram is commutative. It is because these two end up being the same, but I'm starting from, not, I'm not assuming that to start with. All right, so then x, we have our map like this, and we have f and g 
And this is the identity on x. Um, so as an exercise, do the other direction, the other part. It's, again, very similar, but these arguments are worth having practice with. <coughs> All right. Now, that's time, but I'm like on the last page of my notes. Uh, so unless someone seriously objects, I'm just going to keep going. <coughs> All right, so I already said that in set um, we have that we have that um, f is a mono only if it's if and only if it's injective, and f is epi if and only if it's surjective. Um, in fact, saying that every epimorphism is split in this way is equivalent to the axiom of choice. And one of the many reasons why the axiom of choice is obviously true. <laughs> All right, so in the category of rings, this map from the integers to the rationals sending x to x is both mono and epi. So in particular, here's an example of an epimorphism, which is not subjective. It's still injective, but whatever. Oops. All right, last, I want to I wanna talk about a final example of a category um, that's, a, that's a fun example. Uh, and a useful example um, that we will see uses for later. So, <coughs> oh, it's not here. All right, so we're going to let C be a cat, some category, um, and x be some object in C. All right. Now we're going to talk about slice categories. So uh, the slice category of C under x, which is quite a mouthful, so we will denote it um, <coughs> As <coughs> so it's C under X. So I'm going to put X, and it's going to be over C. Or we're going to have X, and then a down arrow, and then a C. Um, honestly, I, I like this notation. But that's uh, just because I like comma categories, because they were my master's thesis a lot. Um, all right, so what are the objects? This is a category. I want to tell you what the objects are. The objects are morphisms from x to a in C. So x is fixed. We fixed x. But a can be anything, any, any, um, any object in C. And it's just the objects are any map, are all the maps out of x to other things in the category. Um, and then the morphisms, all right, a morphism from, OK, so I'm saying that this is, the objects are like this. So a morphism should be, should go from a map f from x to a to a map from g from x to b. And what's that going to be? Um, it's going to be is a map from, so we'll call it h, from a to b, such that this diagram can use. So it's x, and we're taking the slice category under x. So it's from a to b. We have f, g, and h, 
So it's a map like this, such that this diagram commutes. Um, and this is putting like a Tony arrow in the diagram is shorthand for saying the diagram commutes. Um, <coughs> OK, so composition. So this is a map in the category such that in the category C such that this commutes. Um, Composition, well, composition is like this. Right? Composition is actually just composition of these maps. Um, the identity is the identity. Obviously, that commutes. Um, all right, this is the slice category of C under x. We can take the slice category of C over x. And I'm going to write for this, I'm going to write C over x or C over x. Again, I prefer this notation. I think this notation is more commonly used. <coughs> um, and the objects are maps into x now. And the morphisms, well, the morphisms are the same thing, but now I'm taking the category over x. Yes. So the, the, inf the information here is h. This is the information of the morphism between the objects f and g. All right. So important examples of this are, um, I'm going to write, hmm, write star over set and say star over top. Here, star is going to mean a singleton. So this is a singleton, maybe I'll, why not? All right, so say in this case, what's this? This is um, some set. So an object in here is some set with a map from a singleton to that set. So what's that? That picks out an element, right? That's what it does. If I have, so I'm, I'm dealing with this now. So if I, this is some f, but actually, I'm just going to call that x to say that it's just a, it's a, it's a function from a singleton into x. So what it does is it picks out an element, yes? Where? No, no. No, no, that's all, that's all correct. All right, so if we have some other object in, the, in this category, singleton over set, what does that do? That picks out some y in y. So what does a map from here, from this set to this set have to be in this category? Well, it's just some function f such that f of x equals y. So this is, this is the category of pointed sets or based sets. And that just is saying that it's a category where the objects are sets with a specified base point. And the morphisms are functions that send base points to base points. Um, and this is pointed topological spaces or, or based topological spaces. And it's the same thing. It's, it's topological space, spaces with a specified base point. And the maps are continuous maps between topological spaces that send the base point to the base point. Um, and these two examples will be 
important when we get to doing some algebraic topology. Uh, and that's everything I had for today. All right. Uh, does anyone have any questions that they want, that they think should be on the recording? Otherwise, you can ask questions after I hit stop. All right. And now we can talk about 